Hello, my name is Elsie. I'm an author, a Zimbabwean author. I'm also the owner of the Vision Production. And on this channel, I talk about cultures. I talk about the cultures from Zimbabwe and also the cultures that I personally encountered in the United States and also around the world. We're talking about different cultures. And culture that includes from where you live to yeah, you know, food and all that, it's all included in the culture. So today, my video is very interesting because this is one culture that many people maybe don't really think about it as a culture, but it is a culture. And I'm following up with a video that was made by one of the YouTubers, Wadimaya, who travels around Africa and promoting Africa the projects in Africa and all those good stuff. And he went to Zimbabwe and he was shocked by this culture. And that's the culture in a religion. Actually, first before he went to Zimbabwe, he went to South Africa and he made this religion. And then he was told the, um, the religion actually come from Zimbabwe. So he decided to go to Zimbabwe to actually find out more information about this religion. And that's what he did. And based on, on that information, I just wanted to add more to that. So basically in this video that you can find below, I'm going to put the link of uh, Wadmeyer's video. He's talking about a, a, a church or a religion called Masoe. Masoe is a a, a, a church that originates in Zimbabwe. And it's one of those indigenous uh, religions that are flourishing a lot in the, the southern part of Africa, or you can say in Zimbabwe in particular, but also like in this particular situation, he found Masoe in South Africa. And Masoe actually has spread, I think in Europe, in England in particular, they are pretty big there and maybe many parts of the world. But I wanted to add it to that because Masoe is one of them. So now I'm going to tell you about more of these religions that you can find in the southern part of Africa. And they are normally called the indigenous um, religions or I, I don't know the other name, but I think they are mainly, you know, referred to as indigenous uh, churches of Zimbabwe. The indigenous churches of Zimbabwe, they were not churches that were started by missionaries. These churches, they were started before, I believe, before the missionaries. They have completely different practices. So first of all, I'm going to name the names of the bigger ones. There's a whole lot of the other small ones that comes from maybe from this church to that church to that church. You know how like Christianity spread out and they have all the different denominations. That's how this um, religion, sometimes they spread it too. So I'm only going to mention maybe five major ones, five major ones that I know. Um, if you are in Zimbabwe, you are walking at some time, Friday night, Saturday, maybe up to Sunday, you are going to encounter these people and you are going to look at them and wonder, who are they? What are they doing? Because there is some significant things that they do or they wear or they um, practice that is so um, different that you, you will know. You will just look and you're going to think, oh, what is that? You know, something like that. Or you are going to hear music that is like different and you're going to wonder what are those people doing? So... Masowe is one of them. Uh, Majeganishen is another one. Uh, Mapostory, they call them, is another one. Um, Zion is another one. And also ZCC. All these uh, churches, they are pretty big. I would say like in Zimbabwe, they are pretty big. And they are... Um, mainly they practice their things very, very similar, especially Masoe and Mapostoli. Those two, they are like very, very close. And the names of the founders too, they are the same. Giovanni Masoe and Giovanni uh, Marange, you know. So they all, you know, like um, they are similar. 
they wear garments. Usually their garments are white. Um, women, they cover, they cover their heads and they are supposed to wear, you know, uh, what they call modest, you know, modest way of uh, dressing. And usually they wear only solid things. They don't wear colorful like what I have here is colorful and all that. They don't wear those kind of things. They wear solid things. That means they could wear more mainly white or they could wear some other color as long as solid. But when it comes to the Masoe, they basically wear only white, especially the women. You see them on a daily basis. They are wearing white, a scarf that is white and also dresses or skirt and top that is white. Everything is going to be white. Uh, the um, uh, Jaganishin, it's slightly different, but they also wear solid colors. They don't practice the colorful. I'm not sure what's in this um, colorful thing. If anybody knows about these churches that I'm talking about and you know some of the points, please put in the comments because uh, we can actually have more discussion about this as we go. By the way, I just forgot to just um, tell you, if you are new here, please subscribe. Uh, also uh, ring the notification bell so that you can be notified when we bring another video. Also share and like, share to others this good information. So we can continue now. Please don't forget to subscribe. Um, so the Mapos, the Majeganishin, they have drums. So their worship time is pretty loud, is pretty significant because you can hear the drums from a very long distance and the singing and all that. And all of them, they dance in their singing and their worshiping and, you know, all that they do that. They also wear the scarves, the women, they wear the scarves. Uh, like I say, they can wear other colors, but they don't wear colorful stuff like, you know, any kind of color, flowery, whatever, any kind of mixture. They don't do that. They wear just solid light colors, you know, light usually in uh, appearance, not black, but light colors usually. They wear those ones. Um, the other one is the Zion. The Zion, they wear also, I think, light colors. Uh, they wear uh, garments. The Zion and the Jekanishin, their garments are very similar. Similar in the sense that their garments could be um, colorful. They can be decorated. And they, like the Jekanishin, they always decorate. They do some sewing in their garments and all that kind of stuff and the everything that they are doing has a special meaning on what because they go according to how the holy spirit guided them and so on even how the garment you know they choose the garment or a, a, a prophet chose the garment for them it's also how they are guided by the spirit so they actually go according to that so they they have all these colorful garments that when they are dancing and they swear that garment will be like all around them and all that. It's such a beautiful scene actually to watch. And um, the uh, ZCC, likewise, they were colorful. ZCC is one of them, as I have said. They, um, they also practice, uh, I think they worship on a Sunday. If I'm not mistaken, if someone knows about this, um, let us know. But I think they worship on a Sunday. They also practice the um, same practices in terms of uh, they have drops, they dance, they sing. Women also, they wear their scarves. I think they wear regular clothes, but they wear scarves. They also don't have a whole lot of colors around them. Then it comes to one common thing about all these indigenous religion is that they practice um, spiritual healing. Here I have known it as um, called like people speaking in tongues and people they can prophesy. But there it's a pretty intense, it's a very intense uh, way of doing things. When they are in these sessions, as they are 
preaching. Their preaching is very minimal. Their singing and the beating of the drums, the whole ritual of bringing like the Holy Spirit is very intense. So they don't do a whole lot of like Bible study, you know, reading and studying and all that. Their aim is mainly to really bring this spiritual atmosphere, to change the spiritual atmosphere and bring the Holy Spirit and bring the healing angels around them. So when they come to the time now when they can heal, they have this whole element, like the whole atmosphere, the whole vibration has been changed. So I would say all this religion, all this indigenous religion, I would say almost all of them, even the smaller ones that I did not mention here, they practice this, um, you know, healing, spiritual healing. Methods of healing will come in different ways. Um, I talked about the spiritual healing, but then the question can be, how do they do spiritual healing? Well, they usually sometimes pray over your head. They put their hands, maybe a number of uh, uh, spiritual healers around you. They put their hand and they pray over you and they touch your body or whatever, wherever you need healing. And sometimes the prophets, they can tell. They can tell like your stomach is the area that you need before you tell them. And sometimes they can tell it's your head, whatever they can see. And then they focus on that area. They also use water. So you are asked to bring maybe a bottle of water and they pray over the water with the understanding that the healing angels, the elements of healing and all that, you know, are going to be put into the water. And as you drink the water, you are going to feel the healing. These things, they sound very weird, I think, for someone who haven't heard it. But if you practice something and you know this is the way how it goes, you believe in it. You know, it's not too much about what we do that is like, this is what it is. It's really about believing. You believe in it and you do it and it works. So this is exactly how it works it too to these people. They pray over water and they believe that it heals them. And it does, it heals them. Uh, I think I mentioned about uh, Sabbath as a holiday. I mentioned about um, what they eat. I don't know if I mentioned this, yes or no. But if I didn't, what they eat, they don't eat pork. They, they have all this kind of uniform. They don't eat pork, all of them. Um, they, they see certain animals or things that they can eat, touch or they don't touch or they don't eat or they can eat. And all this is stated out in the book of Leviticus for those who want to dig more, like where is that in where, who say that or whatever, you know, according to, to the people who believe in it, it's God through Moses. They stated those things in the book of Le Leviticus 11, that's the book. You can find all those things that they pretty much follow to the dot. They pretty much do these things to the dot. They just follow, and that's the way they live their life. So also, you know, taking you back a little bit, I want to think that this, these churches are some of the original first churches that were started after Jesus because these people had followed the tradition of the Hebrew ways of life. And this was the Hebrew ways of life. And they followed that way. And they continued in that manner until today. They still follow those, uh, those practices. So I think I have covered almost um, what I would say, I can't say everything because there's a lot when you talk about religions like this, but I covered what I thought I could cover today. Um, and I, I think this is all how far we can go today. And I hope you enjoy the video and don't forget to subscribe and also push the notification bell. Uh, when I bring the other videos, you can be notified and share and also put the like button, please. Okay, so we'll see you next time with another video. Thank you. Bye-bye now.